Book of Heaven, Volume 5, Part 1, J.M.J. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Lord, come to my help. Bind this rebellious will of mine that always wants to be recalcitrant against holy obedience. It puts me into such constraint that while sometimes it seems to be dead, then more than ever I feel it alive in me like a snake, and it consumes me inside. Therefore bind me with new ropes, or rather fill me with your holy and adorable will to the point of overflowing outside in such a way that my will may be consumed within yours. Only then shall I be able to have the happiness of fighting no more against holy obedience. And you, a holy obedience, forgive me if I always wage war against you, and give me the strength to be able to follow you placidly in everything. For sometimes it seems I have all the reason to fight against you, like in this writing about the confessor. But enough. Let us keep silent. Let us hesitate no more. And let us begin to write. Since my past confessor, here Luisa is referring to Father Michele de Benedictis, who was her confessor from 1888 to 1897. And the next confessor she will be referring to is Father Gennaro di Gennaro, who was Luisa's confessor from 1898 to 1922, who will be called her present confessor. Since my past confessor was very occupied, in fact, during the course of the years in which he directed me, when he could not come, the present confessor would come. Though I had never thought I would find myself in the hands of this one, more so since I was happy with that one, and he had all my trust. About one and a half years before the present one became my confessor, as I was in my usual state, Blessed Jesus told me that he was not happy with the fact that the confessor no longer interested himself with my interior and with the way he cooperated with our Lord over my state, telling me, When I place victim souls in the hands of a confessor, the crafting of their interior must be continuous. Therefore tell him, either he corresponds to me or I shall put you in the hands of someone else. And I, Lord, what are you saying? Who shall be so patient as to take upon himself this cross of having to come every day to sacrifice himself like this confessor? And Jesus, I shall give light to, and he mentioned the present confessor, and he shall come. And I, how impossible it is that he shall take up this cross. And Jesus, yes, he shall come. And besides, when he does not listen to me, I shall send him my mother. And he, who loves her, shall not deny her this favor. Indeed, when one truly loves someone, he does not send him back. However, I want to see what this one does for a little longer. And you, tell him everything I have told you. When the confessor came, I related everything to him. But poor one, a new occupation he had undertaken made it impossible for him to occupy himself with my interior. It really showed that it was not his will, 
but the impossibility for him to occupy himself with me. When I would tell him, he would devote himself better, but soon he would return to not bothering about it like before. Blessed Jesus would lament about him, and I would repeat it to the confessor. One day he himself sent me the present father, and I opened my soul to him also, telling him everything I have said, and he accepted to come. I was surprised at how he said yes, and I said to myself, Jesus was right. But soon the surprise ceased, and I am unable to say how, but it lasted as long as a shadow that quickly disappears. He came for just two or three days, and then he was no longer seen. He too disappeared like a shadow, and I continue to remain in the hands of the past confessor, adoring the dispositions of God, more so since I was happy with him, who had made so many sacrifices because of me. After another year or so had passed, I felt a need of conscience, and I told the past confessor, who said to me, I shall send you Father Gennaro, that is, the present father, who would be invested with my necessity. I was concerned about a storm that had happened between them, but Jesus repeated, Do not move things. I myself have disposed everything and everything that has been done, has been done well. March 19, 1903 True love is that of the one who, in suffering for God, wants to suffer more. This morning I saw the confessor all humbled, and also blessed Jesus and St. Joseph, who said to him, Get down to work, for the Lord is ready to give you the grace you want. After this, on seeing my dear Jesus suffering, as in the course of his passion, I said to him, Lord, did you not feel tiredness in suffering so many different pains? And he, No, on the contrary, one suffering would ignite my heart more to suffer yet another one. These are the ways of the divine suffering. Not only this, but in suffering and operating, it looks at nothing but the fruit it receives from it. In my wounds and in my blood, I saw nations being saved and the good that creatures would receive. And my heart instead of feeling tiredness, felt joy and ardent desire to suffer more. So this is the sign that what one suffers is participation in my pains, that there is suffering united with joy to suffer more, that in operating, one operates for me, that one does not look at what he does, but at the glory he gives to God, and at the fruit he receives. March 20th, 1903. Jesus and St. Joseph console Father in his difficulties. As I was outside of myself, I saw Father all in difficulty with regard to the grace that he wants. And once again, Blessed Jesus with St. Joseph were saying to him, If you get down to work, all your difficulties shall disappear and shall fall off like fish scales. March 23, 1903 If a love is holy, it forms the life of sanctification. If it is perverted, the life of damnation. As I was in my usual state, after much struggling, for just a little I saw my adorable Jesus in my arms, 
and a light coming out of his forehead. Within this light, these words were written, Love is everything for God and for man. If love ceased, life would cease. However, there are two kinds of love, one spiritual and divine, the other corporal and disordered. There is a great difference between these two loves in intensity, multiplicity, diversity. One could say that there is almost the difference that exists between the thinking of the mind and the operating of the hands. In a very short time, the mind can think of a hundred things, while the hands can only perform one work. God is the creator, and if he creates the creatures, it is love alone that makes him create. If he keeps all of his attributes in continuous attitude toward creatures, it is love that pushes him to this, and his very attributes receive life from love. The same for a disordered love, like the love of riches, of pleasures, and of many other things. These are not the things that form the life of man, but if he feels love for these things, not only do they come to form his life, but he reaches the point of making of them his own idol. So if a love is holy, it forms the life of sanctification. If it is perverted, it forms the life of damnation. March 24th, 1903. Though being nothing, one can be everything while being with Jesus. This morning after I had gone through most bitter days, blessed Jesus came and spent time with me intimately, so much so that I thought I would possess him forever. But all of a sudden he disappeared like a flash. Who can say my pain? I felt I was going insane, more so since I was almost sure that I was not going to lose him anymore. Now while I was being consumed with pains, he came back like a flash, and with sonorous and serious voice, he told me, Who are you to expect to be always with me? And I, insane as I was, all daring, answered, I am everything while being with you. I feel I am nothing but a will come out of the womb of my Creator. And as long as this will is united with you, it feels life, existence, peace, all of its good. Without you, I feel it without life. I feel it being destroyed. I feel it dispersed, restless. I can say I experience all evils, and in order to have life, and so that I may not become dispersed, this will that came out from you looks for your womb, your center, and there it wants to remain forever. Jesus seemed to be all moved, but then he repeated again, But who are you? And I, Lord, I am nothing but a drop of water, and as long as this drop of water remains in your sea, it seems to it that it is the whole sea. If it does not go out of the sea, it remains clean and clear in such a way as to be able to stand the comparison with other waters. But if it goes out of the sea, it shall become muddy, and because of its littleness, it shall be dispersed. All moved, he bent down toward me and embracing me told me, 
My daughter, the one who wants to remain always in my will, keeps my very person within himself. And even if he can go out of my will, since I created him free in his will, my power operates a prodigy by administering to him continuously the participation in divine life. Because of this participation he receives, he feels such strength and attraction of union with my divine will that even if he wanted to go out of it, he could not do it. This is the continuous virtue that comes out of me toward the one who always does my will, about which I spoke to you the other day. April 7th, 1903. Doubts of Louisa about her state of victim. After going through most bitter days because of the continuous privations of my adorable Jesus, this morning I felt I had reached the summit of affliction, and tired and exhausted in my strengths. I was thinking that he really did not want me in this state any more and I almost decided to go out of it. While I was doing this, my lovable Jesus moved in my interior and made himself heard praying for me. I could only understand that he was imploring the power, the strength, and the providence of the Father for me, adding, Don't you see, O oh Father, how she has greater need for help? as she wants to render herself a sinner by going out of our will, after so many graces. Who can say how I felt my heart split on hearing these words of Jesus? Then he came out from within my interior, and after I made sure that it was blessed Jesus, I said, Lord, is it your will that I continue to remain in this state of victim? Because not feeling myself in the same position as before, I see myself as if the coming of the priest were no longer necessary. For if nothing else, I would spare the confessor the sacrifice. And he, for now it is not my will that you go out of it. As for the sacrifice of the priest, I shall render back to him the charity he does, increased a hundredfold. Then all afflicted he added, My daughter, the socialists have plotted among themselves to strike the church. This they have done publicly in France, and in Italy in a more hidden way. And my justice is looking for voids, so as to lay hand to chastisements. April 10th, 1903. Since men do not surrender, Jesus shall play the trumpet of new and grave scourges. As I was outside of myself, I saw our Lord with a rod in his hand with which he touched the people. As they were touched, they scattered and rebelled. And the Lord said to them, I have touched you to reunite you around me, but instead of reuniting, you rebel and scatter away from me. Therefore it is necessary that I blow the trumpet. And while saying this, he began to blow the trumpet. I comprehended that the Lord shall send some chastisement, and men, instead of humbling themselves, shall take the occasion to offend him and to move away from him. And in seeing this, the Lord shall make the trumpet of more grave scourges resound. April 29, 1903. Jesus suspends Louisa from her usual state so as to be able to chastise. 
I went through most bitter days of privations and of tears, with the addition of seeing myself about to be suspended by the Lord from the state of victim, as indeed happened. In fact, as much as I tried, I could not manage to lose consciousness. But rather, I was surprised by so many pains in my bowels as to become restless, unable to make head or tail of anything. I only had a dream at night in which I seemed to see an angel who brought me inside a garden in which all plants were blackened. But I did not pay attention to this. I could only think of how Jesus had driven me away from himself. Then, later on, the confessor came, and finding me inside myself, he told me that the vineyards had frozen. I remained so very afflicted, thinking of the poor people, and with the fear that he would not allow me to fall into my usual state so as to be able to chastise freely. However, this morning, blessed Jesus came, making me fall into my usual state. And as soon as I saw him, I said to him, Oh, Lord, what about yesterday? What did you do? You made your bravado. And besides, without even telling me anything, for at least I would have prayed you to hold back the chastisement in part, and he, my daughter, it was necessary for me to suspend you. Otherwise you would have prevented me and I would not have been free. Besides, how many times have I not done what you wanted? Oh, my daughter, it is necessary that scourges pour upon the world. Otherwise, in order to spare the bodies, souls shall be lost. Having said this, he disappeared, and I found myself outside of myself without my sweet Jesus. So I went around looking for him, and in the meantime I saw a sun in the vault of the heavens that was different from the sun we see, and behind it a multitude of saints who in seeing the state of the world, its corruption, and how they make fun of God, all in one voice cried out, Revenge of your honor, of your glory, make use of justice, for man no longer wants to recognize the rights of his creator. But they were speaking in Latin, only I could comprehend that this was the meaning. On hearing this, I trembled, I felt my blood run cold, and I implored pity and mercy. May 8, 1903. When man disposes himself to good, he receives good, and if he disposes himself to evil, he receives evil. I continue in my most bitter state of privation. At the most, he makes himself seem taciturn and for short instants. This morning, since the confessor committed himself to making him come, as I lost consciousness, he made himself seen for a little and almost by force. And turning to the confessor, with a serious and afflicted aspect, he said to him, what do you want? Father seemed to be confused and was unable to say anything. So I said, Lord, maybe it is that thing about mass that he wants. And the Lord said to him, Dispose yourself and you shall have it. Besides, you have the victim. The closer you remain to her with your thought, and with your intention, the stronger and freer you shall feel to be able to do what you want. Then I said, 
Lord, how is it that you are not coming? And he added, Do you want to hear something? Hear then. And at that moment, many cries of voices could be heard from all over the world, saying, Death to the Pope! Destruction of religion! Churches torn down! Destruction of every dominion! No one must exist above us! And many other satanic voices that it seems useless to me to repeat. Then our Lord added, My daughter, when man disposes himself to good, he receives good. And if he disposes himself to evil, he receives evil. All these voices you hear reach my throne, and not once, but repeated times. And when my justice sees that man not only wants evil, but he asks for it with repeated petitions, with justice it is forced to concede it, so to make them know the evil they wanted. In fact, one can truly know evil only when he finds himself in it. This is the reason why my justice keeps looking for voids in order to punish man. However, the time of your suspension has not yet come, at the most a few days for now, so that justice may press its hand down on man a little bit, for it can no longer bear the weight of such enormities, and at the same time, so as to make man's forehead raise too high, lower down. May 11, 1903, Peace Puts Passions in Their Place The upright intention sanctifies everything. As I was in my usual state, I saw my adorable Jesus for just a little, who said to me, Peace puts all passions in their place, but what triumphs over everything? establishes all the good in the soul, and sanctifies everything, is to do everything for God. That is, to operate with the upright intention of pleasing God alone. And upright operating is what directs, dominates, and rectifies the virtues themselves, and even obedience. In some it is like a conductor who directs the spiritual music of the soul. Having said this, he disappeared like a flash. May 20th, 1903. Louisa offers her life for the church and for the triumph of the truth. As I was in my usual state, I found myself outside of myself with blessed Jesus in my arms, in the midst of many people who with irons, swords, and knives were trying some to beat, some to wound, some to cut off the members of our Lord. But as much as they did and tried, they could cause no harm. On the contrary, their very irons as sharp and cutting as they were, lost all their activity and became inoperative. Jesus and I were highly afflicted at seeing the brutality of those inhuman hearts that though they saw that they could do nothing, would yet repeat the blows in order to succeed in their intent. And if they caused no harm, it was because they were unable to. They became angry because their weapons had become useless, and they were unable to carry out their resolute will to do harm to our Lord. And they said to themselves, Why are we unable to do anything? What is the cause? It seems that other times we were able to do something. But as long as he remains in the arms of this one here, we can do nothing. 
Let us try and see whether we can do harm to her and get her out of the way. While they were saying this, Jesus withdrew to my side and gave them freedom to do what they wanted. But before they laid hands on me, I said, Lord, I offer my life for the church and for the triumph of the truth. Accept, I pray you, my sacrifice. Then they took a sword and cut my head off. Blessed Jesus accepted my sacrifice. But while they were doing this, in the act of making the sacrifice, to my highest sorrow, I found myself inside myself. I thought I had reached the place of my desires, but I remained disappointed. You have reached the end of the Book of Heaven, Volume 5, Part 1. Fiat.